Michael Sammons coming to you today with the second part of yesterday's devotion. So part two is the empty house. How do you feel an empty heart? I want to read again from Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he, and he taketh with himself seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter in, and they dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. In those verses, the parable, Jesus is describing the spiritual condition of the generation, of his day, and our day too, really. And he had just described them as evil and adulterous. He also described how they would be condemned by the Ninevites, and Queen of Sheba in the Day of Judgment. In our present text, they are described as the, this evil generation in the 45th verse. Using the example of demon possession, Jesus warned it is not enough just to go through the process of having one's sins forgiven. Unless reformation continues and something positive is put in its place, the end might prove, prove worse than the beginning. Such had been the case in the Jews, with the Jews of Jesus' day. There is an important lesson to be gleaned that applies to us today as well. It is a lesson on the evils of disinterest. We must replace evil with good. So the danger of an empty heart our heart is like a home. It's a home for the Lord, for the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to dwell. In it can reside things that produce much harm to our spiritual life. But it can also be the source for much good. Our house can be cleansed. Our heart can be cleansed. Our conscience is purged from dead works to serve God in Hebrews 9 and 14. We're expected to fill our home. Through faith, Jesus Christ himself is to dwell in our hearts. God's peace and grace are to fill our hearts in Colossians. Even God's law is to be written in our hearts in Hebrews 8 and 10. What happens when we do not fill our heart? Remember the maxim, nature abhors a vacuum? This idiom is used to express the idea that empty or unfilled spaces are unnatural as they go against the laws of nature and physics. If we do not make the effort to fill our home with good things, then evil things are likely to return and with a vengeance. Consider the example of the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, they have been washed, sanctified, and justified. Yet later, they were engaged in sinful conduct once again. Consider the example of the false teacher mentioned by Peter in the second chapter. The Lord that bought them. They had been bought by the Lord and escape the pollution of the world through Jesus Christ, but they have become entangled again. For them, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. How do things become worse than at the first? In the case of the false teachers, they have forsaken the right way. Eyes full of adultery, hearts trained in covetousness, even denied the Lord who bought them. In our case, our hearts can become hardened 
I want to read from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 29. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for the judgment of fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment, suppose ye, shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an holy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. We can become so hardened through willful sin that we trample the Son of God underfoot and count the blood of the covenant of a common thing and insult the Spirit of grace. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4 through 6 says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. We can reach the point where it becomes impossible to be renewed again to repentance and where we are crucifying again the Son of God and putting him to an open shame. In such a case, how true the statement, the last state of that man is worse than the first. How important it is then that we do not let the home of their heart remain empty and thus invite worldly things to take up residence. To avoid this, here are some thoughts. And if you have a, a paper and a pencil, you can write down these scriptures as I go through them and study them later. How do I feel the home of my heart? Sanctify the Lord God in your heart. 1 Peter 3.15 The word sanctify means to set apart. Set a special place in your heart for God as the ruler of your life. We must regard Christ as holy in our hearts. Be selective as to what goes into your mind. In Colossians 3.1-2 Set your mind on things above. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of God, Christ, dwell in you richly. These are things that will fill your heart. Follow the example of David in Psalms 101, 3 and 4. Think about things that are good and wholesome in Philippians 4 and 8. Remember transformation and character begins with renewing the mind, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Utilize every opportunity to study God's word. 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. Attend all church services. Participate in the Bible study programs that's offered. Read your daily Bible, Psalms 1, 1 through 6. Fill your heart with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. For this is how you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Colossians 3 and 16. Allow yourself to be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 and 19. Sing at church, at home, in the car. Sing alone and with others. Let your mind dwell on things that are worthy of praise and virtue. Philippians 4 and 8. Choose your friends carefully. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. They will either help you to be strong or hinder your efforts. Proverbs 13 and 20. We cannot have communion with darkness and expect the light of God to dwell in us. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. So what is the condition of your home or your heart? Are you filling your home with things that are good? If not, then your heart becomes an abode for every evil thing, and the condition of your heart may become seven times worse than before. 
Have you experienced the initial cleansing of your home or your heart? Have you been cleansed by the blood of Jesus in baptism in the name of Jesus Christ? If so, wonderful, that is great. But don't be deceived into thinking that you do not need to be concerned about filling that dwelling with the presence of God and all that is good. And I want to end with this verse, Acts 22 and 16. And now, why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So, if you're not as close to God as you can be, or you should be, evil spirits can fill that heart. Study the verses I gave you and pray that the Lord will move on your soul and your life so you'll be ready to meet him when he comes. Lord, we ask you today that you touch each and every one under the sound of my voice, their homes and their families, and I pray, God, that you'll help them see that they need to be ready when you come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.